Chris, would you like to go next? Thanks. It's good to be here. Um, I'm Chris Anthony with Aptera Motors. We're building the world's most efficient transportation. Uh, behind me, uh, you'll see one of our solar powered electric vehicles. Uh, we launched our first product uh, earlier this year. Uh, we already have uh, almost 13,000 uh, orders for this vehicle. So we're planning for production and trying to, uh, to ramp up and, and get, uh, get great things to happen. Um, it's uh, good to be here. Chris, what about Aptera? What was your decision process? Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm a finance guy by training. Uh, I, I came out of college and got into uh, the brokerage world and did uh, several direct public offerings and IPO work. I've taken several of my companies public, uh, most recently my lithium battery company, Flux Power. I uh, took it to the NASDAQ like 18 months ago. Um, it's um, raising capital in the traditional fashion. Uh, when we started Aptera, it just didn't seem to be a good fit for us. Um, our business plan is super unique. And even though it's orders of magnitude less capital intensive as traditional automotive, it's still capital intensive. Um, so going the traditional route of finding money through VCs or big funds uh, just didn't seem like a good fit for our first several raises. So going to the crowd, um, you know, did a lot of things for us. One, it, it really built our, our public um, persona. Uh, we're able to bring in a lot of early investors that are really passionate about our brand now because we've grown our valuation so successfully uh, over the last year. Um, and they're out telling their friends and their relatives and, you know, anybody they can that Aptera is, you know, this amazing company that's going to change the world with solar uh, powered electric vehicles. So, um, you know, for us, it was really about being able to, um, you know, use our brand story to gain the kind of public momentum that we thought would take us into becoming a public company. And it's done very well for us so far. We have almost 10,000 investors and that's 10,000 brand ambassadors that are out there. So we're hoping to uh, carry that momentum, you know, into some public offering in the next 12 to 18 months here. So um, I think it's uh, worked very well for us. I would say uh, in particular, we have a very uh, sexy product. It shows well. Um, I think when people see it, they're interested right away. So if you have an engaging product or an engaging story, uh, this kind of crowdfunding world of getting people to uh, support you like this is, it's an amazing tool and it's way different than what I was going through a decade ago in raising money for my other companies, uh, raising money for my boat company and my lithium battery company prior to crowdfunding. Uh, they were both pretty exciting stories. I mean, uh, wakeboard boats that, um, you know, are out there throwing the best wakes and towing the best tournaments and lithium batteries that are going to power our future. Both those are pretty compelling stories, but crowdfunding wasn't around, so I had to do it the traditional way. So I think uh, very fortunate to have Aptera um, come about at the time when these tools were available. And, and Chris, what, what learnings do you wish you guys had before starting? Yeah, you know, because I've had a, a background uh, in this stuff, um, I realized the pain in doing S1 filings or uh, going out and doing secondaries and, and things like that. And those processes are very painful. So I would tell everyone, uh, you know, if you're doing a reg CF or you're doing a reg uh, A plus, um, the accounting and the legal will suck. Doesn't matter how well prepared you are. Doesn't matter how many ducks you have in a row. The lawyers and accountants will find something to make your lives miserable. Um, you just got to plow through it. You just got to have the determination to just knock down each roadblock as they come and get the offering up. So uh, just go into it, realizing that it's, it's going to be a crap fest. And, uh, you know, you just got to work through those things. Um, at Terra in particular, we were we we're super lucky because, um, <clears throat> you know, we had a, a great fan base pretty much from the beginning. So we haven't um, allocated any ad resources. We haven't done that. Uh, we've only um, kind of just spread our message uh, organically by just kind of education, uh, telling people, you know, what we're doing, when we're doing it, how we're doing it. So we've done like a lot of engagement, but we haven't, <clears throat> we haven't advertised at all for, for our, our crowdfundings or anything like that. So um, I would say if you have a compelling story, leverage it as much as you can with the people that you have around you, because it'll save you big time on your advertising dollars. Um, you know, I think we're, we're, we're in a fortunate position that, you know, our vehicles, so interesting looking that I think we get a lot of clickbaity stuff because they're just like, what the, 
the hell is that? <laughs> Looks like an insect driving down the road. Um, so, you know, uh, not everybody will have that. So you have to plan accordingly to what your, your business model is. But I would say leverage, if you, if you start to get early fans, leverage them as much as you can to retell your story uh, and try to broaden that out as much as you can. It's, it's money um, that's well worth it versus uh, spending money on, uh, on large advertising budgets. Sure, sure. But something that I wish I would have known before we really got into this, because I really went into it expecting that we we're going to have to have a grand marketing budget to really push through these different campaigns and, and drag in money, but it, it hasn't been the case so far. Can, can I mess up your linear process? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, just to pile in on what Chris just said, uh, one thing that we have done uh, numerous times, and it seems a little odd, is we've doubled up on legal counsel. Um, so we actually um, have a securities council and then separate, separate corporate council. Um, and it sounds expensive, but if you can get through your first Reg A filing and have the SEC come back with just one comment, which is you didn't put the price in, which was intentional, um, that can save you a lot of headache. And it's, it sounds like uh, a little painful, but in a lot of cases, some of the major law firms don't have the expertise. Uh, regarding uh, Reg A or, you know, some of the broker dealers as well. Uh, so sometimes it might be helpful to consider that. We do the same, William. We, we have we did, separate we did the same securities from her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yes. I, I, I would just tag on to, uh, to William's point. I think it really is uh, we're in the trust building freight uh, phase here of the equity crowdfunding world. And the more people trust in the process, uh, that companies are making it from ideation to IPO, uh, the more they'll be willing to step into this game. Um, it is rarefied air for somebody to, you know, find Eptera, um, you know, uh, online and then go to our website and go, oh, I can invest in them and then make it through the portal and actually dump their money into that stock because each each level al along the way is, you know, a level of mistrust because they're, who, who's the portal? Who's, you know, like Eptera, yeah, I like I know, story, yeah. but, you know, what, what are all these other layers in here? I got to, I got to pay through a, uh, through a, a closing house, but it's underwritten by this other underwriter. And, you know, I think it's got to be uh, much clearer and cleaner for the end investor. And the more that they trust the process and, uh, you know, have transparency and are seeing companies that have made it from ideation to IPO, I think it'll, it'll start to take off. But, you know, um, having some bigger entities step in uh, would be amazing too. But Chris, if, what, what, if, what if the wealth manager at Fidelity was speaking with their client and like, Hey, I know you really love electric vehicles. You're really care about the environment. You've got your portfolios kind of not as diversified as you just like no different than a pension fund. You need to take one to 7% of the funds available and stick them into something hot, you know, frankly, a lot riskier eyes wide open, yeah. you know, here, are, you know, 17 companies in the space that you might want to consider taking, looking at, uh, taking a look at and, you know, click here and you're done. Uh, as opposed to the horrifying, I mean, from a client experience standpoint, <laughs> horrifying process an investor needs to go through. Um, we can do better, but you're going to need a big player to play ball. Yeah, no, I love, I love the idea. Um, <laughs> you know, I certainly see, uh, we have a lot of, uh, uh crypto investors, um, you know, I, I certainly see a lot of people that just have mistrust of the big banks. So I, I, I hate the idea of positioning crowdfunding with some larger, you know, JP Morgan, uh, something that isn't kind of, uh, you know, freedom enabling, you know, I see cryptocurrency as kind of, you know, the, 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 the currency power back to the people. And that's what crowdfunding is kind of, you know, the, the investment power back to the people. Gosh, I wish I could have invested in Tesla in the early days. I wish I could have invested in Google, but that was just closed off. That was only for rich folk. That's not for me. Uh, now with crowdfunding, you know, it doesn't matter. You make a hundred grand a year and you'll be able to uh, invest in these people. So, um, you know, I think, uh, it, build that trust factor and build some mechanisms. I like, like start engines, trying to kind of bridge that gap to become a broker themselves and maybe build that trust themselves. So maybe it grows organically from what we're doing, but yeah, trust, trust, trust. I would say for Aptera, you know, one of the, uh, big things that we did that I think helped our conversion from people that were just interested, you know, in our oddly shaped vehicle powered by the sun was that we just over communicated. Uh, we have, you know, my boat company, we had a really sexy boat and it had, you know, 
26 speakers in it and could do all these amazing things on the water. It was a really cool product to describe, but nobody knew what was going on with the company. Lithium battery company, nobody knew what, you know, what eventful things were growing in the company. But with Abterra, we've really over communicated in, you know, what we're doing as a company, what's happening as a company, our new hires, you know, things that we're innovating on. You know, we tell people when we design a new suspension part and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's really helped in conversion. People get interested in what we're doing and then they dig a little deeper and they dig a little deeper and they're like, oh, this is, this is a real story. This is a real thing. This is really cool. I want to be involved. So I would say if you, uh, if you have a deep story behind what you're doing, don't be afraid to overshare. You know, I think uh, in the past, I've, I've been afraid, oh, somebody's going to copy what they're doing. They're going to get a screenshot of some technology that we have, and they're going to run off the show. Now, like, you know, we've got tens of thousands of people supporting our effort. We need to give them all the information we possibly can. Over-communicate with the press, over-communicate with your updates, and just keep feeding people as much information as you can and that will help people that are on the fence of well you know i've got a thousand dollars i could invest but i, I don't know it's, it's a weird space so i would i would try to over communicate that's worked very well for us